Welcome to Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis. I want to start by saying I got great news for you. If you live internationally and you've been wanting to buy some of this Tennis Spin merch, it's ready to ship to you. If you want this most comfortable mask in the world, handmade by Jules, with this adjustable ball here on both sides, you can get it now. All right. If you want t-shirts, long sleeve t-shirts, my very own tennis pin dampener or your very own tennis pin dampener or a phone socket, phone pop socket, it's ready to be shipped to you. So tennispinusa.com or click on the link below. You can order it today. Shout out to my buddy, the Reverend Dennis Pollard. Thank you for the love. Thank you for your support. Happy holidays. Today, I'm going to be talking about used rackets. A viewer emailed me by the name of Brandon O'Brien. And Brandon says, first, I want to thank you for doing your show. I've learned so much from you. Keep up the good work. Thank you, Brandon. Um, I was wondering what you think about the pros and cons of buying used rackets, used tennis rackets. It is hard for me to pay two or three hundred dollars for a tennis racket, but I know you get what you pay for. However, I think that I can buy from someone who paid big money for it, but now doesn't want it anymore. One man's trash is another man's treasure. What are the signs not to buy a used racket? When can you tell when you have bought a, a good bargain or not? Thanks ahead of time. Best regards, Brandon O'Brien. Brandon, that is a great, great question. Um, as you know, a lot of people in the tennis world are equipment junkies. I mean, I know people who literally buy two, three rackets at a time right? And they love it for a week or two a month. And they're like, eh, that's not working for me. And then just kind of push it aside, right? Um, that's why eBay's around. That's why Craigslist's around. So, you know, there are great bargains to be had on the used racket market. So, but how do you know um, if a racket is in good condition, if it's in playable condition, if it's not going to fall apart on you, um, I'm going to show you some signs today. Okay, stay tuned. All right, so I'm going to begin this video by giving you an inside secret. For those of you in the know, you already know this. Um, so the inside secret is <clears throat> it really depends on the company. So you guys know that the paint stays on pretty well on Babolats, Yonexes, Heads, and pretty much every other brand out on the market. But Wilson doesn't have the best paint on the market, and it doesn't like to stay on the racket very much. So if you're going to buy a used Wilson racket, it's probably going to look pretty beat up if the person used it a lot. So for example, I have this older pro staff here. Um, you see that, All right? And you see that, and you see that, and you see that. So this guy obviously is an aggressive player, right? You, you can tell he's digging, you know, so that and that, uh, the paints are chipping off. I mean, this actually looks pretty decent for a Wilson racket because I've seen much worse. Like within a couple months to a year, I've seen Wilson rackets be basically being tied by the handle to a car and kind of driven off on the freeway or something and getting bounced around, right? That's what some of my demos used to look like. So if you're buying a used Wilson racket or if that's what you're searching for, um, just keep in mind the paint is not going to stay on very well and it's not going to look great but that doesn't mean the racket is bad 
or is, is broken or is cracked or any of that stuff. It just looks bad and kind of looks as half the battle in, in the tennis market, especially in rackets, right? So if you're in the market for a Wilson racket, I mean, try to get something a little on the cleaner side. I mean, I probably, if I saw a racket like this, I probably wouldn't pay more than like 50 bucks for it. Um, just because it just doesn't look good, right? You know, this guy was aggressive with it. You know, it impacted the ground a lot. Um, so maybe the structure of the racket um, isn't quite 100% sound. It doesn't mean it's bad, though. It doesn't mean you can't play with it. It's just, you know, been banged around a lot. Ideally, if you want, if you're going to get a Wilson racket, you probably want it to look like this in a used form. Um, looks pretty clean here on the sides, right? We got little paint chips here, which are totally fine. Got some wear on the guard, as you can see here. I'm gonna turn it all the way around for you. Obviously, the guard hits the ground, but that's okay, right? It's still intact. Little paint chip here. Paint chips here and here, a um, couple scuffs here. That's not bad. And sometimes if you guys see like a scuffs or paint chips in the here, the throat area, I probably wouldn't be alarmed at that. It's probably somebody's ring doing this, like tapping that causes the paint chips here. So that's, that's nothing, right? So, this racket, I'd probably get it, right? Um, at a decent price, maybe half the price of what it was on the retail side. This would totally be worth it. Moving over to Yonex brand, uh, Ezo 98. This is the plus version. So look at, let's look at this, this head guard here. So there's been some impact on this head guard, um, probably a lot of scrubbing. Uh, as you can see it with the impact there, this is sticking out there. Somebody caught a ground <clears throat> running. It looks like got some paint chips there. Um, uh, I mean, this would be okay. This would be okay. As long as you're getting a good deal on this, it's totally fine. If it's like half the price of the retail, say in the $100 range, um, definitely a fair value for a racket like this. But those, you know, this thing sticking out doesn't look good. Um, obviously, the guy's impacted, you know, the ground sometime on that side. But still, okay. Structurally, it's fine. Structurally, it's fine. Uh, moving on over the head with this Gravity Pro. Um, I mean, obviously, somebody was aggressive with this racket, as you can see here. And then when I flip it to the other side, there. Uh, otherwise, I mean, you got paint chips and scuffs on the sides. Uh, head guard actually doesn't look horrible. Sometimes you see, like, scuffs here or paint kind of being you know, worn out here with the head guard, uh, the guy slicing or digging on the volleys. Uh, that's not horrible. Uh, like this rack is not horrible. Again, I'd pay a hundred bucks for this, right? In the used market. Uh, moving on over to Babolat. Babolat seems to have one of the better paints in the uh, tennis racket world. Like this racket isn't bad. It looks like it got kind of sun faded a little bit. As you can see, the white isn't bright or as bright as it was. Um, the, you know, you got paint chips there from what I always say, the ring, the rings right there. There's a paint chip there. Uh, moving on up the racket, you got paint chip here, got some scuffs here, um, scuffs here scuffs here let's look at the head guard the head guard's not bad uh, just kind of some sun fading throughout this racket because it's not as vibrant as it was but not bad i mean again this is kind of in the hundred dollar range if it's in the used market so about half of what you would pay 
um, in new form. Okay, so just to reiterate, anything other than Wilson, right? It's probably going to look pretty good. Wilson, got to give it a little bit of leeway because the paint's not the greatest. Okay, so let's let's take a look at some rackets that you do not want to buy. Okay, if you see any of these signs, you don't want to buy these rackets because structurally they are done. Okay, they're they're garbage. They're ready for the garbage heap. Uh, let's start by taking a look at this Pro Staff 97 LS here. Um, if you see something like that, right, that's kind of a gash, and you see a good piece of that graphite missing or, or caved in, you see a crack that goes through like that, right, that racket is done, okay? That is a crack, that's a structural issue that this racket can no longer really be played with. It will cave in there eventually, and you will not be able to string this racket. Uh, it is pretty much done. Let's take a look at a banana here, banana arrow. So it looks like it's round, doesn't it, right? But it's got a nice little crack right here, and you can see it go right through to the other side. Can you see it? Or we'll go flip it to the other side. So anything that you see that looks like a crack, even if it's a hairline crack that goes from one side to the other, you do not want that racket. It will crack more. It will cave in there eventually. This head guard's holding it together. But if I took the head guard off, that crack goes all the way around this site. So you do not want that racket. Now this Technofiber 305, it looks good, doesn't it? Right? Doesn't look like there's anything wrong with it. Except down here. So that is cracked all the way to the other side. As you can see, I'm going to flip it around for you. Right? Structurally, it isn't horrible. But, and you don't see it cracked here. So it's just on the top for now. But this crack will eventually go all the way around. And, you know, basically the racket will just get it worse and worse. So anything like hairline cracks like this that doesn't look horrible will only get worse. Uh, it'll just get bigger and bigger as you break the strings, as it get restrung with all the punishment that you impart on it by playing, uh, the racket only gets weaker and weaker. So that will eventually be done. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't buy something like that. Now, this racket, there's nothing wrong with the head, but there is a crack in the throat. And you see that that crack actually goes about there all the way around to there, right? So you do not want this racket. It'll eventually go all the way around and come apart right there in the throat. So do not buy a racket that looks like that. Okay, more bananas here. So this racket is cracked over here. My guess is the racket hit the top, um, the ball hit the top and it couldn't hold it here or the person dropped it on a serve, right? The top hit the ground off a serve. That's where it's going to crack. You don't want to buy this racket. This racket is done. It's going in the trash. Okay, last one. See, sometimes you have to look around the racket to see where it's cracked, if it's cracked. I mean, this racket's been pretty beat up, as you can see here, right? It's, right, this person was really aggressive with the racket, because you can see on both sides of the outer edge um, has been pretty worn. And there's, there's your crack right there. 
and it goes to the other side. All right. So what I would do if I were you, um, I know sometimes you can't see the racket uh, like on an eBay site. Um, you can probably see it on a Craigslist site. Most of those people will say no cracks, right? Um, ask the question if it doesn't say that because, you know, sometimes even the seller doesn't know. Uh, but if you can touch and feel it, you know, I would, this is what I usually do when I, when I examine a racket. I take my finger <clears throat> and I go like this just to feel if there's anything first. And I go all the way around, right? So when I get to there, I was like, okay, well, there's something going on there. And then I come back around with my finger, right? And I, everything else is smooth. I also turn it around and do the same thing, right? Because you never know. There might be cracked on one side and not on the other. Um, and I always look, I always look down here at here and here. Um, there's actually a, a line right there, which I'm pretty worried about. There's a paint chip right there, which I'm a little worried about too. So these will start cracking here and here too. And that's a common crack that most people miss. So I always look at the structure of the racket and then check the bottom because these are common spots, okay? But look at the racket first, make sure it's shaped like a racket, okay? Because sometimes rackets get warped from, you know, people not knowing how to string rackets sometimes. So just make sure it looks like a racket, shaped like a racket, and you can definitely tell when a racket is cracked. Okay, um, use your finger method, use your eyes to see, okay? Even if it looks like a hairline that comes around, probably not worth it to buy, okay? So Brandon, I hope that helped you. So the sweet spot in used rackets, uh, in terms of pricing, can range anywhere from 50 bucks to 150 bucks, depending on the condition of the racket. I mean, I've seen people literally use a racket for 20 minutes to an hour, and it's in pristine condition. Um, in that case, you're probably gonna have to pay a little more for it because it's essentially new. Uh, if it's beat up, you know, you can probably uh, get them for cheaper. I mean, I used to buy my old rackets on eBay for $55 or $50 and, you know, basically rip the grip off, rip the strings off, uh, change the head guard if I need to, and then, you know, go from there. But I mean, that's, you know, those rackets were literally 10 plus years old. Um, so, but yeah, used rackets is a great market. Uh, if you don't want to spend two to three hundred dollars, right? It's kind of like a used car, right? Let somebody lease it for three years and then buy it at like half price. Okay. Thank you, Brandon, for um, the suggestion. Um, I hope that helped you guys uh, when you're searching for a used racket. All right. Thank you for watching Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis.